Seven Days to Die feels like seven years to die. Seven Days to Die is a Minecraft style survivor horror game. As you use tools, craft items, and slay zombies, your skills and character levels up, making your survival chances in the survivor horror game even that much greater. But unfortunately, Seven Days to Die puts more emphasis on survival than it does the horror or the game aspect. This game moves at the pace of a slug. What makes Minecraft so great is that while it is also a survival game about crafting and surviving from random attacks, it moves at a fairly quick pace. You can build a shovel and dig a temporary shelter with sufficient lighting before the sun falls on your initial spawn. Minecraft also makes essentials like a forge or torches very accessible from the jump. Seven Days to Die goes against all of this. For starters, this is no Minecraft other than the basic idea of gather materials, craft with those materials, and try not to die while you do this. But building, crafting, combat, and scavenging all suffer due to the pacing this game has. You collect items and build out a crawl. You can definitely build a shovel and axe fairly quickly as there are basic crafting materials like rocks and trees everywhere. But once you go to dig a shelter, you quickly realize building in this world is going to be a chore. You can't swiftly build an underground shelter to revisit after a day of hunting and looking for supplies to slowly build a thriving chunk of land. It's going to take days upon days. You're better off finding a cabin around essential resources and rebuilding, which honestly takes away the joy of owning the procedurally generated or handcrafted land you spawn into. There's no fun in upgrading something already built, but thanks to how long it takes to destroy a block of dirt even with the hardness level turned down, you have no other choice. You can of course make a building out of wood, as wood collecting is fairly easy, but with how often your tools break, what is a valuable resource that you might as well collect to again just rebuild an already built home? The hunger and thirst system in this game also hinders creativity, as you never feel like you have time to really do anything other than find drinks and food. During my time playing, I found a cornfield behind a cabin for food, but I had no water source. To make drinks, I needed glass jars that I for the life of me couldn't find. Luckily, these glass jars can be crafted, but to do that, I needed to craft a forge, a basic essential, but the crafting material for this forge isn't so basic. I needed to go hunt animals while my character is dying of thirst. Life slowly draining, I had to hunt animals that are practically non-existent in this world. There are deer, rabbits, bears, dogs, but good luck finding them. Which again brings me back to Minecraft. Animals are needed for basic armor in that game and food, so they're reasonably findable. They aren't crawling all over the place, but if you actively look, you'll find some. That isn't the case here. A material you need for essential basics to craft an item needed to create glass so your character doesn't die of thirst is made unreasonably inaccessible. I was in game for six real hours and still didn't have the materials for a forge. My tools and characters were just as basic as a fresh spawn. I felt no sense of progression at all which in turn leaves me feeling frustrated. Like I'm getting nowhere in this game. I eventually started thinking what's the point? I can't reasonably craft. I can't build tunnel systems for materials. I have no source of water. What am I supposed to do other than not die? There's such a deep crafting system here. The idea of a massive scavenging hunt is a joy. You can create stronger materials to reinforce your shelter from zombie attacks. Even craft guns and bullets. Find schematics scattered throughout the world. Find quests that lead to treasures. But again, the inaccessible survival basics make all this seem unobtainable. As if you can't find animals for the hides, you're going to be stuck with the basics forever. That's just how it is. One missing puzzle piece will stop you from finishing. And once you do find them or any other materials, you still have to deal with the overpowered zombies. Zombies in this game are quick damage sponges that can somehow climb. You'll be hitting them over the head with a club with what seems like forever while they just claw and scratch you. Dealing with more than one without a gun is near impossible. And you can't just run as for some reason the developers thought it would be a great idea to to allow them to stun you, so you can't move for like 3 seconds, just take the damage. And once again, you don't just find guns in this game, you have to craft them. And to craft them, you better believe you need that forge. So imagine the endless frustrating cycle of dying trying to collect materials. You can of course respawn wherever you put your bed down, and go back to try and grab your materials, but they haven't left the area. They are surrounding your bag, ready to kill you over and over if you come back for it, probably naked and unarmed, all the way on the other side of the map. This game can also be played online to even the odds up a bit. I would recommend going in with your friends though and not strangers as humans can definitely turn into deadlier versions of zombies. There's also a creative mode here like Minecraft where you have unlimited resources to build as you please if you're into that kind of thing. Seven Days to Die has the potential to be a greatly addictive, well-oiled running machine. It's just missing a few cogs to remotely ever feel satisfying. I give Seven Days to Die a 6 out of 10. If you played Seven Days to Die, tell me what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you haven't played it, tell me if you plan on picking it up. Thumbs up. If you like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel. And tune in Monday for first impressions. We find out what game we're playing next. Thanks for watching.